Hey, mathematicians, let's do your homework. Okay, so this is the back page, but you do owe me the front page if you didn't finish that in class. So on the front page, we're just comparing things that are true about credit versus debit cards. Um, for a quick overview, let's refresh. On a debit card, it is your money. versus a credit card where you're borrowing money. You're borrowing it from the credit card company and you pay them back at the end of your billing cycle, which is usually at the end of a month, versus a debit card where whenever you pay for something, you're not borrowing that money, it immediately comes out of your bank, deducts, means like comes out or takes away from your bank balance, your money's balance, how much money you have. A debit card requires a PIN as your secret password to let you access your money. A credit card, all you have to do is sign. Sometimes you don't even, sometimes you just swipe. It depends on the place which, where you're at. A debit card, you can use, oopsie, use as much money as you have. Credit cards, especially when you're starting out young, have a limit on how much you can spend. Credit cards charge interest if you are late or you don't pay the full balance of your card. Your debit card transactions, like what you buy and how much you spend is kind of private information. Whereas your credit card, the money that you spend and the money that you pay back can go towards a credit score. It can, you get basically getting graded and it goes on to, let me move my face. your credit score. Now, to be clear, this does not mean that the people seeing your credit score can figure out what you bought. That's still private information. But if you ever apply for a loan, people are going to be looking at your credit history and to see how well you pay your money back versus if you apply for a loan, they're not looking at your spending habits from your debit card, which is linked to your checking account. Both of them are cashless payment options. Sometimes, like especially at restaurants, both require signatures. This has more to do with the fact that at restaurants, they will swipe your card and charge you, but then you have the option to add a tip. So you're signing saying like, yes, I approve this change to the charge because otherwise a debit record card does not require a signature, but a credit card should almost always require a signature. These days, now that we have the cards that tap or we tap our phone or we use Apple Pay, those rules are changing. But these are the general differences and similarities that you'll want to look out for on the front page of your homework. Just a heads up, in question number three, there are two correct answers. Everything else has one. On the back of the homework, we are reviewing. We're reviewing equations and inequalities. We have some word problems, and then we have the equations to match them. The first thing I want you to do, whether it's an equation with an equal sign or an inequality with a not equal sign, is I want you to decide if you think this is a multiplicative, times or dividing, relationship, or if you think this is an additive, adding or subtracting relationship. Alondra had $48 in her wallet and then found a $5 bill on the floor. Which equation can be used to find out T, the total amount of money? So usually when you are finding out T, that means T is your answer. It only actually looks like there's one of those. And if you have 48 and you find five, that is an additive relationship. So B would be your answer. Daniela's family bought a boat. 
the maximum, that means the most amount of weight it can carry is 3,000 pounds. Now, I personally have a hard time kind of thinking about what symbol that would be. So I like to come up with examples in my head that are not actually on the page, just so that I really understand what's happening. The maximum amount of weight it can carry is 3,000 pounds. Okay, so if we've got 3,000, can we have something bigger than 3,000? No, 3,000 is like the most. So if I put my symbol this way, I'm saying that my number is smaller than 3,000. 3,000 gets more, like that's the biggest. If I put an equal, I could have exactly 3,000. If I put my inequality symbol this way, I'm saying that 3,000 is smaller than the amount that can go in the boat, and that's not true. So I'm looking for an inequality symbol that goes as a greater than or equal to symbol which darn, I don't actually see. That's because I'm writing mine with 3,000 as the first number. Okay, so we'll write the whole inequality and then we'll kind of turn it all around. Okay, if Daniela put a bed, a dresser, and a TV on the boat, I grew up on a boat kind of like this, except that we did not have dressers or TVs. We had a bunk that was like a mattress, and my brother and I shared, and we each had a little shelf above it, and that was it for our boat. Um... This is, sounds like a fancier boat. They weigh a total of 500 pounds. Which inequality can be used to find W? So Ws are variable. Okay, I see all of them have Ws. The amount of the weight the boat can still take on. So we already have 500 pounds, and you can add more weight, but how much is that? So I'm looking for a 500 plus W. Nope, this says W plus 3,000. This is W plus 500. This says divided by 100. This says times 100. All right, I think I found my answer. You can see that my inequality sign actually goes the opposite way because I cannot just put each part of my inequality on the other side and then just call it at A. If I'm reversing the order, I need to also reverse my symbol. So we've got B and B. So this is the strategy that we're using for all these problems. You need to think them through. You need to think of examples, if you're, especially if you're doing inequalities, like which way might it go? Because you can see some of these inequality problems, like number five, they're not all facing the same direction. So you're going to have to figure out which way it should be facing. So read the problem, annotate it, decide if it's an additive or multiplicative relationship, because that should help you. And ooh, in this one, you are going to have to actually do the math, because you can see that h, our variable, is isolated alone. There are no more operation symbols on the right-hand side, so you're going to have to write your inequality and then solve it, versus most of the other ones where you just have to write the inequality or the equation. Okay, good luck. I will see you on Monday.